Hi, this is Bren Antrim, one of the librarians here at Santa Monica College. Today we're going to do a database tour of Oxford Art Online. This can be a bit of a confusing database, so I'm going to show you some tips to navigate it successfully. In order to get to the database from the Santa Monica College homepage, click on Menu, and then click on the plus sign next to Student Support to open the submenu. From there, head into Library between Counseling and Tutoring. Once on the library website, scroll down and you'll notice below the Databases button is the Ask a Librarian button. This is 24-7 chat reference help. So if you get stuck doing a search anytime, day or night, chat with us and we will get you unstuck. Heading into the databases, if you know the specific name of the database that you're looking for, you can go into All Databases, which is a list of our databases that we subscribe to alphabetically by title with a short description of what's in each database. However, if you just know, for example, you are in an art history class and you need to do a project on Vermeer or on Impressionists, you can scroll down to the Discipline area of Art and Architecture Resources. This is not all of the databases. These are only the databases that are specifically about art or that have really good resources, even if they're not primarily on that topic. We're going to start with the first one, Oxford Art Online. If you're not currently logged in when you attempt to open this database, it may require you to do so. Log in with your Canvas login and password. Once there, if you have a particular person in mind, you can go to the search field and type in their name. Then we wait for the database to load. <laughs> and there's more than one, so you might pick any entry that has the little green unlocked icon, which you can access. Over to the side, on this side, it will tell you there are 122 articles on this particular topic and 10 images. The types of articles include 66 biographical articles, 22 on family, three on particular places, and 31 subject references, and we'll talk about that in just a moment. It is also broken down by city, country, or region, and you can even limit it by life event, the death of Vermeer, for example, or when he flourished. You can limit it to a specific date range or even an individual date, and you can look in specific fields. In this case, Vermeer is most heavily represented in 19th century art, Renaissance Baroque art, and, probably due to influences, 20th century art. And then you can look at medium, and these are the various areas of emphasis in which Vermeer is mentioned, as well as the various eras in which the members of the Vermeer family come up, and the occupations under which they flourished. So once you find something that you like, you can click on it, it will show you the piece that it's talking about, link you to the collection where it's at, and give you some basic information. This is on a painting. When I go back, I can also find an author biography. This gives information on his life and work and goes into some depth. And then it talks about the periods of his work. With some examples. As you can see, this goes on for a very long time. <laughs> It includes his life and work, his working methods and technique, the iconography within his work, critical reception and posthumous reputation, and a bibliography of other works that you can look under. Now that's not the only way that you can search this particular database. This database can be searched by field. Say, for example, I'm interested in Latin American and Caribbean art. I can go there and look and find entries on that. It's searchable by medium, so for example, if I were interested in fashion or body art, I could look for that, or sculpture and carving. 
it's searchable by era. So if you're looking for a particular time period, say the 18th century, you can look by century. You can look by region. So say, for example, I'm interested in the myriad of types of art coming from Africa. I can look for the region. You can look for the place type. In other words, maybe a specific city or a specific site or a specific region. And you can look by occupation. I'm looking for an artist or I'm looking for a patron or a writer or a publisher. Up top, there is the Tools and Resources link. This link is particularly useful if you have a broad topic and you really don't know where to start. When you click on Tools and Resources, it has a number of different options for you. Collection guides are from various museums and gallery collections around the world. It is illustrated and includes a discussion of those objects. A subject guide I'm going to come back to in just a little bit. It's a brief summary of a topic and many links within it. The Museum of Modern Art, Modern Art has a number of resources listed here, as well as timelines of world art that show the big picture of the development of visual arts across the globe, as well as podcasts and interviews, learning resources for the Renaissance, and even a pronunciation guide for pre-Columbian terms. If you go into subject guides, say for example you need to do an essay on Impressionism, when you go there, there are a number of general overviews that are also listed along the side. So I scroll down alphabetically until I get to Impressionism and Post-Impressionism, and if your topic is covered here, this is a wonderful place to begin your research. It gives you an introduction of exactly what it is, along with an example of the work, and then it links to essays on Impressionism, Neo and Post-Impressionism, Symbolism and Fauvism. And then it has biographies of artists who are well known for that particular school of art. So this is a good place to begin if you want an overview and then you need to dive in deeper for your work. If you have any questions, please use the Ask a Librarian chat on the library homepage. Good luck with your research and be well.